practical way to self-realization. Beloved immortal self, thou art divine, live up to it, feel and realize thy divine nature. Thou art the master of your destiny. Do not be discouraged when sorrows, difficulties and tribulations manifest in the daily battle of life. Draw courage and spiritual strength from within. There is a vast inexhaustible magazine of power and knowledge within. Learn the ways to tap the source. Dive deep within. Sink down. Plunge in the sacred waters of immortality. The holy to remain within. You will be quite refreshed, renovated and vivified when you go to the divine source and realize I am the immortal self or Atman. Understand the laws of the universe. Move tactfully in this world. Learn the secrets of nature. Try to know the best ways to control the mind. Conquer this mind. Conquest of mind is really conquest of nature and the world. Conquest of mind will enable you to go to the source of soul power. And you can then realize, I am immortal self or Atman. Do not murmur. Do not grumble when troubles and sorrows descend upon you. Every difficulty is an opportunity for you to develop your will and to grow strong. Welcome it. Difficulties strengthen your will, augment your power of endurance, and turn your mind towards God. Face them with a smile. In your weakness lies your real strength. The word invincible, nothing can harm you. Conquer the difficulties one by one. This is the beginning of a new life, a life of expansion, glory, and divine splendor. Aspire and draw. Grow, expand, build up all positive, virtuous qualities, the Devi Sampati, namely fortitude, patience and courage that are dormant in you. Start a new life, tread the spiritual path and realize I am the immortal self or Atman. Have a new angle of vision, arm yourself with the discrimination, cheerfulness, discernment, alacrity, and understanding spirit. A glorious, brilliant future is inviting you. Let the past be buried. You can work miracles. You can do wonders. Do not give up hope. You can destroy the harmful effects of unfavorable planets through your will force. You can command the elements and the nature. You can utilize the effect of evil influences and the antagonistic dark forces that may operate against you. You can change the unfavorable circumstances into best possible ones. You can nullify destiny. Many have done this. You can also do so. Accept. Recognize, claim thy birthright now, thou art the immortal self or Atman. Determination and self-reliance are very necessary for success in self-realization. In Mundaka Upanishads you will find this Atman cannot be obtained by one who is destitute of strength or without earnestness or by penance without mark. But if a wise man strives after it by those means, then his self enters into Brahman. Fearlessness is an important qualification for an aspirant. One should be prepared to renounce this life at any moment. Without renunciation of this little sensual life, the eternal spiritual life cannot be attained. Abhayam comes first in the Devi Sampati or divine qualities that are eliminated in the Gita. <coughs> stop it, stop it. A timid man or a coward dies several times before he actually dies. When you have once decided to take the spiritual practices, stick to it tenaciously at any cost, nay, at the risk of your life. Come what may, be bold, stand up. Realize the truth, proclaim it everywhere, thou art the immortal self or Atman. Destiny is your own creation. 
You have created your destiny through thoughts and actions. You can undo the same by right thinking and action. Even if there is an evil or a dark antagonistic force to attack you, you can diminish its force by resolutely denying the existence of evil or resolutely turning your mind away from it. Thus, you can disarm destiny. The one thought, I am the immortal self or Atman, will neutralize all evil forces, the evil influences of all malevolent planets, and will infuse in you courage and inner spiritual strength. Wrong thinking is the root cause for human sufferings. Cultivate right thinking and right acting. Work unselfishly in terms of unity with Atma Bhav. This is right action. The right thinking is when you think I am the immortal self or Atman. There is no such thing as sin. Sin is only a mistake. Sin is a mental creation. The baby soul must commit some mistake during the process of evolution. Mistakes are your best teachers. The idea of sin will be blown in the air if you think, I am the immortal self or Atman. Don't say karma, karma. My karma has brought me like this. Exert, exert. Do purushartha, do tapas. Concentrate, purify, meditate. Don't become a fatalist. Don't yield to inertia. Don't bleed like a lamb. Roar, om, 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 like a lion of Vedanta. See how Mark and Dea, who was destined to die at his sixteenth year, became a Shiranjeevi, an immortal boy of sixteen years, an account of his tapas. Also note how Savitri, by her tapas, brought back to her life her dead husband. How Benjamin Franklin and the late Sir T. Muthuswami here of the Madras bench elevated themselves. Remember, my dear Naranjan, that man is master of his destiny. Vishwamitra Rishi, who was a Kshatriya Raja, became a Brahma Rishi like Vasishta and even created a third world for Prasenku by his power of tapas. Rogratnagar became the sage, Valmiki through tapas, Rogues Jagai and Madai of Bengal became highly developed saints. They became the disciples of Gauranga. What others have done, you can also do. There is no doubt of this. You can also do wonders and miracles if you apply yourself to spiritual sadhana, tapas and meditation. Read the book Poverty to Power by James Allen. With interest and attention, you will be inspired. Draw up a program of your life. Follow my twenty important spiritual instructions and forty golden precepts. Read my book, Sure Ways for Success in Life and God Realization. Adhere to the spiritual routine. Apply yourself with zeal and enthusiasm to sadhana. Become a Naistik Brahmachari. Be steady and systematic in your spiritual practices. Shine in your own native pristine brevi glory. Become a Jeevan book. Remember, thou art the children of immortality. Hey, Somya, dear immortal self, be bold, be cheerful. Though you are down and out, though you have nothing to eat, though you are clad in rags, the essential nature is such dhan and existence absolute, knowledge absolute and bliss absolute. This outer cloak, this mortal physical sheet, is an illusory mayaic production, smile, whistle, laugh, jump. Dance in joy and ecstasy. Sing Om Om Om. Ram Ram Ram. Sham Sham Sham. Shivoham Shivoham Shivoham. Soham Soham Soham. Come out of this cage of flesh. The word not this perishable body. The word the immortal self of Atman. The word sexless Atman. The word the son of king of kings. An emperor of emperors. Brahma of the punishes the Atman who dwells in the chambers of your heart, Harade Guha. Act as such, feel as such, claim your birthright now from this very second. Feel as such, recognize, realize, not from tomorrow or the day after, but right now from this very second. Tattva Masi, the word that was Naranjan, the word immortal self or Atman. Brother, courage is thy birthright and not fear. 
Peace is our divine heritage, not restlessness. Immortality, but not mortality. Strength, but not weakness. Health, but not disease. Bliss, but not sorrow. Knowledge, but not ignorance. You are the architect of your own fate and fortune. You are the master of your own destiny. You can do and undo things. You can attain Brahmanhood by right thinking, right feeling, and right acting. You can break old barbed habits by the power of will. You can destroy wrong samskaras, unholy desires, wrong imaginations. You can build new habits. You can change your nature. You can build a beautiful character. You can move the whole world by your spiritual force. You can elevate others also to the status of divinity. You can control the force of nature. You can command the elements. Rely on your own self. Do not be credulous. Believe not in any dark voice. Hear the inner voice of the soul or promptings of the pure conscience. Be not a slave. Do not sell your liberty. Reward the immortal self. Destroy the inferiority complex. Draw power, courage, strength from within. Be free. Have no blind faith. Reason out carefully and then accept anything. Do not be carried away by blind, surging emotions. Subdue them. Do not be intolerant. Expand. There is a vast magazine of power and knowledge within you. It needs ignition. When the whole mysteries of the self will be revealed unto thee, the darkness of ignorance will be dispelled by the light of knowledge of the self. Constant meditation on the Atma is the master key to open the realms of knowledge. I have given here the gist of Vedanta in a few lines. Taste the Vedantic nectar and time, immortality, eternal bliss and perennial joy. This is the goal of life. This is the end and aim of existence. Karma Yoga Upasana will prepare you to realize this highest goal. Try to lead a life of non-attachment. Discipline your mind gradually. No one is free from pains, diseases, troubles and difficulties. You will have to rest in your own sarup, the blissful Atman, the source and support for this life. You will have to remember your own divine nature. Then alone you will gain inner strength to face the difficulties of life. Then alone you will have balanced mind. You will not be affected by external vavid influences and unpleasant discard and vibrations. Regular meditation in the morning will give you new strength and inner life, perennial joy and unalloyed bliss. Practice this. Feel this despite your adverse stormy conditions. Gradually you will grow spiritually. You will attain self-realization eventually. Your present ailment is a karmic purgation. It has to come to make you remember him more and more, to instill mercy in your heart, to strengthen you, and to enable you to develop power of endurance. Kunti prayed to God to give her always adversity so that she could remember him always. Bhaktas rejoice in suffering more. Disease, pain, scorpions, snake calami calamities, etc. are messengers from God. Your Bhakta welcomes them with a cheerful countenance. He never grumbles. He says once more, I am thine, my Lord. Thou doest everything for my own good. Where there is the room for lamentation and despair, my dear Niranjan, thou art dear to the Lord. There is a reason why he gives troubles. If he wants to take anyone to his side, he takes away all money. He removes his dear kitten kin. He destroys all his pleasure centers so that his mind may fully rest at his lotus feet. Face everything with a smiling, cheerful countenance. Understand his mysterious ways. See God in everything. In every face, out of sight but not out of mind, we are closer when we live physically at a distance. Let us dwell in our heart. Krishna suddenly hides himself so that Radha and the gopis might thirst for him more eagerly. Sing like Radha, thirst like gopis for his vision. Krishna's grace is bound to descend. He is the immortal friend. Forget not the flute bearer of Vrindavan and thy solace and the joy of Devaki. The all-merciful God resigns in the chambers of your heart. He is quite close to you. You have forgotten him. But he still cares for you. Troubles are his blessings in disguise. He wants to mold your body and mind as fit instruments for his unhampered play of Leela. He ministers or attends to your wants in a better manner than you yourself will do. Keep the 
load down that you are carrying on your shoulder unnecessarily on account of your egoism. Give up your self-created responsibilities and be at perfect ease. Have perfect faith in Him. Do total unserved self-surrender. Run to Him now. He is waiting with outstretched hands to embrace you. He will do everything for you. Believe me, take my word for it. Open your heart to Him quite freely like a child. All miseries will come to an end. Say unto Him at least once with bow sincerely. I am thine, my Lord. All is thine. Thy will be done. The gulf of separation will vanish now. All miseries, troubles, worries and diseases will melt away. You will become one with the Lord. Feel that the whole world is your body, your own home. Melt and destroy all barriers that separate man from man. Idea of superiority is ignorance or delusion. Ishavashimidam sarvam. Develop Vishwaprem. All embracing, all inclusive love. Unite with all. Separation is death. Unity is eternal life. The whole world is Vishwabrindavan. Feel that this body is the moving temple of God. Wherever you are, whether at home, office, know you are in the temple of God. Every work is an offering unto the Lord. Feel that all beings are images of God. Transmute every work into yoga or an offering unto the Lord. Have Akartha Sakshi Bhav if you are a student of Veda. Have Nivita Bhav if you are an aspirant in the path of Bhakti. Feel that God works through your hands. That one power works through all hands, sees through all eyes, hears through all ears. You will become a changed being. You will have a new angular vision. You will enjoy the highest peace and bliss. May the self effulgent Brahman guide you in all your activities, wishing you joy, peace, and mortality. Om Shanti, thy own self, Shivananda. Om.